Welcome to the Rival Pitches Finale. Every other week on the podcast, Robert Therrell and Chase Bridges go head to head with movie pitches and the audience picks the winner. The competition has been head to head this season and Chase is going into the finale with a one point advantage. Tonight, Robert and Chase will both be pitching their movies with complete pitch decks and a proof of concept trailer. The judges will act as studio heads and score the pitches on the criteria of concept, story, characters, commercial appeal, likelihood to watch, and trailer. Make sure you stick to the end to see who gets crowned this season's Written by Champion. Welcome to the Rival Pitches finale. Gentlemen. I want to say thank you so much. You're welcome for being here today. And I'm not trying to win favor by being complimentary. I'm not trying to make you biased by the end of this. I just want to say Shama, I'm a huge fan. Your new show, first time visitor, season one now on YouTube, big fan. Huge. I, you know, whatever you're doing, it's working. And uh, we're only a minute in. That's all I want to say. <laughs> Gunner. Yeah. Once in a lifetime town. Ooh. A lot of people are saying, and I agree, best thing to happen to Hollywood since we stopped giving kids cigarettes so we get longer days on set. <laughs> Is that true? Is that yes. true? Like, wow! Cruz! <laughs> so last year... <laughs> no, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. He took an ant skydiving. That's a true thing. It's on YouTube. An ant? Like an he ant? He did. Yes. Yeah. Oh, like the insects. Like, like, like your, your, like your like a woman. Mom, mother or father's uh, <laughs> sister. Okay, okay, okay. Was it skydiving in like relation to like its own size or like you like no like you I, yourself? Okay. Brief summary. Yeah. I got this airline fishing tubing. Okay, and then it's like this little thing that you can wrap around your wrist. And I found an ant in the nature, right? And then I went skydiving with my dad. So it's like you went like so, legit so like, skydiving. Yeah, like legit skydiving. I put a little bit of peanut butter in there to feed them and like maybe provide some padding. And I actually got to the ground and like everyone huddled around as I was like cutting it out of the tube. And people were like, what is this guy doing? Yeah. And he was like, and I was like, I took an like an ant skydiving. And they were like, dude, I thought you took like, like, do you mean like your ant's ashes? <laughs> <laughs> and so like this like crowd of people were just yeah. huddled around. I was like. Uh, no, like an insect, and they're like, oh, and then just like walk, like walk. You're like away. a Rick Moranis character. That's incredible. <laughs> well, enough about other people's oh, accomplishments. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. ant must have been like, ah! <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, it's that scene from Spy Kids 2 with his cute collar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Imagine being in the dirt in a mound your whole life. Yeah. And all yeah. of a sudden you're just yeah. in the air. Yeah, they ant went back home and started a new religion. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so, so if this is your first time watching a Rival Pitch Finale, this is the second annual. Woo! Yes, last year, I was embarrassed, devastated, destroyed, heartbroken, and defeated mm. by Robert, which is to be expected. We all know Robert's a bit of a tryhard. <laughs> like, we get it. You're talented and hardworking. <laughs> Fucking loser. <laughs> But after that night, after not only, well, all right, did it help my case that Robert's best friend, Alan, was one of the judges last year? No. Did it help that Shama, at one time, his biggest video was directed by Robert and he probably felt some sense of obligation to vote for him? No, that didn't help either. Did it help that one of my best friends was on the panel and still didn't vote for me? No. But I made a vow, no. I made a promise that I would never put myself in the position to be so embarrassed again. And so this season on Written By, I worked so hard and it paid off because at the finale last season, we were tied up, but I'm actually entering the finale with a one point lead. Now we have three judges. Each one will get their own vote. Last year I wore a blazer. I tried really hard, I was very nervous, but I don't need to be nervous, I don't have to try hard. So ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> May I present to you my blockbuster sensation, Pet Rock, the movie. I didn't know there was going to be visuals, but I'm so excited. <laughs> Just a heads up, if you haven't watched before, we have a whole pitch deck, both myself and Robert, and a trailer to show at the end. Wow, what? All right, ladies and gentlemen, logline, when a wannabe finance bro 
bets his friends that he could sell anything, he ends up with a pet rock empire. Mm. Have you noticed I do have some visuals of kind of mm. the tone I'm giving? You'll notice they're all from the social network. Mm. You know how sometimes a movie will be like, this is like if Hunger Games and Harry Potter met. My movie is if like the social network and the social network met. Let me show you a few of the characters. This here is Dill, short for Dylan, kind of like the pickle. He's working a dead-end job as a cashier at Walmart, but he has giant aspirations to be the next Mark Cuban. He wants to be a shark. Spending all of his free time watching Gary V videos and trying to drop ship phone cases on Amazon, <laughs> he thinks that this hustle is going to lead him one day to the Fortune 500. He gives a lot of finance advice uh, for someone who has never been successful. We all know a finance bro. We all know those guys on TikTok. You don't know any finance bros? Not personally, but yeah, I know I, I know of them, yes. Okay. I, I'm, I'm following. Well, I, I already lost Gunner. No, no, no. No, I'm, I am on board. Keep going. <laughs> we also have Terry and Chuck. Now, these are Dylan's two best friends. Terry is, uh, he initially makes the bet, saying that uh, there's no way that he could sell anything. There's no way he could sell pet rocks to the current generation. And after the business takes off, he actually becomes a major investor and helps run the company. So does Chuck. Chuck is the other best friend, and he is so confident at first that the Pet Rock business is going to fail that he offers to invest $1,000 if he can sell 50 rocks. So let's break in to our last character of importance, the CEO of Hasbro. Now, I do want to point out I wrote this pitch way earlier this season before the Barbie movie came out. So don't think Will Ferrell. Think yeah. very professional businessman. Yeah. Hmm. After the major, major success of Dill's pet rock company, he offers a meeting and uh, he pretty much offers to buy the company for $5 million. We'll find out how that goes later. Hmm. Let me give you a short three slide synopsis. Short and sweet, but I'm gonna tell you the whole move. Okay. okay? So uh, by day, Dill is working at Walmart as a cashier, but at night, he's at the bar with his two buddies, Terry and Chuck, and they are talking about NFTs. Cryptos, drop shipping, the influencer economy. And uh, they all have little small businesses. You'll notice I put businesses in quotes. It's because they're really not businesses. It's like they're, uh, hey man, I'm, I'm trying to buy phone cases off Amazon and sell them for a higher price. So uh, they're not making any money, but they love to repeat the guru talk that they ingest all day long from YouTube. And so they're at the bar one night and uh, they're talking about how the best way to sell something is to have a good story. And Dill brings up the fact that with a good story, he could sell anything. And they're like, I don't know, man. I really don't think you could sell anything. Like, I bet you couldn't sell pet rocks. He's like, dude, I could totally sell pet rocks. And um, he, he gives the example of, I don't know if you know a lot about the pet rock toy from the 80s. But it was a guy who essentially did the same thing. He made a bet. He was like, I can sell rocks to people. People are stupid. And he sold millions of dollars of pet rocks. And it's a, kind of an iconic toy now. So taking inspiration from that, he's like, look, if he could do it, I can do it. And they're like, that was the 80s. Everyone was dumb back then. Try to sell Gen Z TikTok people a pet rock. It's not going to work. And he says, I take that bet. They put $100 on the line as well as if he can sell 50 rocks, he will invest $1,000 in the company. So trying to win the cash and the glory of proving his guru skills, Dill goes off and he buys garden rocks and googly eyes and some glue. He sits at home, he puts all of his pet rocks together, about 50, and then he sits there and realizes he has no idea what to do next. Luckily, his phone goes off, he looks down, there's a YouTube notification, his favorite guru streamer is live and he's doing a Q&A. So he hops on and he actually manages to ask a question. He says, how do you sell a product that has no value? And the answer he gets is I would pay influencers to give it value. So that sends him on his glorious mission. He creates Rocky the influencer coach. He comes with a little podium and uh, you can place him in the background of your podcast set, your TikTok videos, your YouTube videos. And it comes with a little booklet that tells you who Rocky the influencer coach is. Rocky is the best influencer coach in the world. If he's with you on your journey to create content, you cannot possibly fail, right? Because what do people love nowadays? Kids want to be YouTubers when they grow up. Everybody wants to start a podcast and they want whatever edge they can get. And he's like, this is genius. 
So uh, he calls off the bet with his friends. He says, this isn't a bet anymore. This is a business. They pull together their money and they start using Fiverr to create the packaging, the website, the logo, the Instagram account, and they send out 50 free Rocky the Influencer coaches to influencers and podcasts that they think would actually open them and use them. Next thing you know, it's working. It only costs $3 to make a Rocky box and they're selling them for 20 bucks. Before you know it, every kid who dreams of being a YouTuber is begging their mom for one. Every podcast has one on their set, every TikTok has one in the background, and the company starts growing fast. They're getting social media managers, they've got employees who put together the boxes. They're, uh, they got coders to help keep their website from crashing from all their or, uh, orders. Three months have gone by, and they have sold 100,000 Rocky boxes. That's about $2 million in sales. The quick rise of the Rocky boxes get the attention of Hasbro, and the CEO of Hasbro, hey, let's get a meeting with these guys. In this meeting, he tells me he's very, he's very impressed with what they've built, and he offers them $5 million to buy the company. They said, you've got a ton of potential, but you're going to need physical distribution, not just online, and we have the marketing and brand loyalty that can really take this to the next level. We don't think you can do this without us. They offered to buy the company for $5 million. Dylan and his friends have built something great. It's time to take the big paycheck and walk away from all the stress. Let's let big boy Hasbro take it over. At least that's what Terry and Chuck think. Dill is furious. He feels like $5 million is a slap in the face of what he's built. Dill is a guru now. He is a business genius. He sold rocks to kids and made millions. They're on track to do $8 million by the end of the year. So he refuses to sell the company and his friends are furious. They're like, dude, what are you doing? You know, Hasbro tries to talk sense into him. They say, look, kid, you made $2 million in sales, not profit. And with our resources, we can make this worthwhile. That's something that you can't do alone. And this is a fad. It was a fad in the 80s. It's a fad now. And it could be over by the end of the year. This is a risk for us. Five million is a great offer. We're offering you $5 million, not for your company, for the name Rocky the Influencer Coach. Because we don't need permission to sell our own rocks. You can't copyright rocks. So, Dill refuses. He's a guru. He knows better. Uh, he's Gary V, after all. He's everything he's always wanted to be. So he turns down the offer, and the second that he refuses to sell, Hasbro does exactly what they said they would do, and they release their own rock influencer called Rock Influencer. And now they're in every retail store in the country before Dill can even get on the phone for a distribution meeting. Next thing you know, there's $5 pet rocks, there's $2 pet rocks at every Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Walmart, Target. Rocky the Influencer Coach has gone the way of the fidget spinner, the Kadamas, and Crocs. They were a fad. But you make them look good. I got some rocks out. <clears throat> <laughs> I want to take a second before I talk about Dill's journey, to repeat how much I like each of you. <laughs> now, Shama, you were here last year. You remember I tried to bribe a few of the judges on the, on the I panel. Remember. I remember. I'm not gonna try to bribe you this year. In fact, I'm gonna give a bit of advice to you guys. When you're choosing who to pick, I don't, I don't want you, we know Robert's good, okay? This isn't about who's good. We know mm -hmm. Robert's good. Mm -hmm. This is about me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's get into Dill's journey in this movie. And I think Dill's journey in this movie can be wrapped up with a line of dialogue at the end of the movie. At this point, Dill has lost everything. The business is over. He, d he reinvested all of his money, so he didn't actually make a profit. So now he's right back where he was at Walmart asking for a job. And who is the general manager at the Walmart he's applying for? His best friend. Terry. And while Terry's interviewing him, Terry goes, you know, he asks him a question and he gets defensive about the pet rock thing. And Dill goes, but I'm an entrepreneur. I, and Terry goes, no, you're not. You just watched a bunch of YouTube videos and got lucky. You didn't go to business school. You don't have any idea what it means to run a business. If you, I mean, if you would have sold a fucking rock to Hasbro for $5 million off of a $300 investment, then you can call yourself an entrepreneur. Now you can call yourself a magician a guru, a god, but you didn't. You showed everyone what you really are, a loser. Dill's own ego and overambition took away the very thing that he wanted with all of his heart. Now, we're gonna take a second. 
I'm gonna pull up the trailer. I was half expecting just the trailer of Social Network. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny, actually. I kind of wish I did that. I worked really hard on this. I could have just done that. <laughs> the way things get changed is by great storytelling. It's always been that way, and it always will be that way. So what I would do today is I would produce as much content as humanly possible. Facebook fan page number one, YouTube shorts number two, TikTok number three. Unlimited smart content targeting CFOs to show them why working with us would save their company money. YouTube shorts. YouTube shorts is TikTok, except it's YouTube, which means it's searchable. Quantum qual signals, I would then amplify true consumer insights, written word, infographic content, and I would run media against easier to care for than other pets, and less likely to run away, die, or multiply. The pet rock begins its life on the beaches of Baja, California. Dahl is the man who created the pet rock. We mailed our first pet rocks to the stores October 1st, and by Christmas we'll have sold well over a million units. Do you want to sell something worthless? All you have to do is pay influencers to give it worth. This isn't a bet anymore. It's a business. You have a meeting with Hasbro. I don't need Hasbro. Wow. <laughs> Dang. At this time, I would like to reiterate how much I enjoy each and every one of you. <laughs> And uh, I'll give you a moment to go through your rubrics okay, yeah. and ask me any questions okay. that you would like. Yes. Oh, you, did you have a No, 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 you're good, you're good, you're good. Uh, with this being with Hasbro. Yes. Is there an end credit scene with a Beyblade coming in on an asteroid? That is a very good question. <laughs> We've already started product management. Okay. Uh, we're gonna be putting out real pet rocks, real Rocky the influencers, and we're mm -hmm. gonna trick the people who watch the movie into being like the idiots in the movie who bought the rock. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. But I uh, like the Beyblade part. Yeah, we can talk. We can talk. We can talk. We can talk. Who owns Beyblade? Hasbro? Hasbro. We'll talk. That's a Warner Brothers property, and I believe you're with uh, Discovery. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. I was doing a Zaslav joke. Uh, so do you have any distribution plans or anything For like the that? film? Uh, the, hey, you, the get, you, you guys are the big boys up top. I'm just the guy with the ideas, you know? Okay. Yeah. I could watch a compilation of Gary V contradicting himself for hours. Yeah. And it's something about um, like this guy's been so right <clears throat> and so confident yeah, about everything yeah. he says and everything he says expires so fast that I'm like, <laughs> I just want to see more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still like processing everything. Uh, so yeah. I'm in, I, I really enjoyed that. Thank I you. I will say that. I don't want you to feel like, so I, I do feel a little guilty for not piping in and, and uh, uh, commenting more throughout yeah. it, but I was uh, thoroughly entain entertained throughout the whole time. Hey, you don't have to apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> don't say sorry. Don't say sorry. In fact, whatever you say, I'm going to agree with. <laughs> um, well, I think my biggest thing is that I, I really do love the concept. I really, I think like... Honestly, I think it's a great. I'm gonna go ahead and just mark you for like. I think it's a really funny concept. I think it uh, uh, can be hilarious. I think it can really talk about uh, uh, this current state of where we're in, right? Um, my only thing is, I feel like the fact that in this world, I, I do feel like putting it modern day is the correct choice. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think just I feel like the fact that. Uh, in the movie world, the pet rock already existed. Kind of right. dilutes it a little bit for me for some reason. Okay. Um, that's but uh, I don't, I'm not like a I'm not like a, a hard sell on that. I'm just that that was the only part. I was like, I wonder if that would be. Um, um, I but think I don't know if I may. Yes, please. I think you could actually add, add to how difficult sell it, it to would me. be. Sell it to me. Sell it to me. I think it sell could it be. You know, it kind of adds how difficult it would be to sell it to people, mm -hmm. knowing that it's already a dead thing from the 80s mm -hmm. but nostalgia is big so i could be no could no be no, no i get what you're saying i get what you're saying yeah. okay so the the whole you that would be like a crucial element of it is that like mm -hmm. um that would be a, a mountain he'd have to climb right yeah. okay okay but also whatever you say i agree no no no, no. <laughs> and if you contradict i'll agree with both of you. 
Okay. Uh, and the one one more thing is I will say the the side characters, both the friends. Yes. They kind of seem like the same. That is a very good point. Yeah. Yes. So I feel like I feel like there's got to be ha- like the. Uh, you know, one guy pulling them one way, one guy pulling the other. Different perspectives. Yeah, That's yeah, a good yeah, point. yeah. yeah. Um, I do like how it, <laughs> I do like how cynical the ending is. Yeah, I like how like uh, uh, and, and honestly, it's kind of funny how like you're gonna watch a pet rock movie and it's like. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I mean, that, that's me. You know? uh, yeah, that's my yeah. vibe. Which is great. Which I, I genuinely, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm just commenting on it at this point. I don't think I have too many more questions. Um, well, you can save your final thoughts for the end if you like. You can keep thinking about how much you liked it. Mm-hmm. Anything from you guys? I take your silence as a good thing. Yes, Cruz. Did you have anything? No, you go ahead. Uh, did you have any ideas for like who you're like wanting to cast yes great right. question oh, great question wow. that is a good question yeah. uh, hey we can do some back and forth here I was thinking okay. uh, I was thinking uh, Andrew Garfield I was thinking Army Hammer mm. yeah I was mm. thinking two Army Hammers mm. There's a second I don't know if that's one. I was thinking <laughs> post cannibal Army Hammer <laughs> in fact we could probably write that into the movie you said that these characters need diversity One's a cannibal. Yeah. How about yeah. Jesse Jesse, um, Jesse, Plemons? Jesse Eisenberg? Yeah. Yeah. Plemons, oh, right? Plemons, yeah. That would yeah, be great. Yeah. Yeah, that would be actually great. would be a really, yeah. really good. If you did have, if you did have Army, well, this is a wild choice. But if you had Army Hammer in there and he's like the business guy, it's like, dude, you got to be a man eater. <laughs> hey, and you know what, guys? Hey, there's two amazing actors sitting right here. Why, why don't we cast you guys? <laughs> oh, I, got, I knew I it as soon as you brought it, it up, he was going to say something like that. It's Jeremy Allen White. Ooh, oh, that would, but it's just him go. as this character in The Bear. Right? <laughs> He's yeah. just yelling at yeah. him. Yeah. No, in, all, in all seriousness, you know who plays a really good kind of like uh, business? Uh, Will Arnett. Mm. But he might be a little too old to be... Maybe he could be the CEO of Hasbro. Yeah. Yeah, mm. I can see that. Yeah, He does a real... Let's get down to business. Yeah, Five I feel like yeah, I feel like it. it uh, the 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 age is a specific thing because like if you yeah. do, because they're not the influence of themselves, right? Right. Yes. So if it almost makes it sadder in a maybe a funny way, it almost feels like a two thousands comedy. If it is like a like Jason Bateman type of age Older of character. like these are like dudes who like are going out to Applebee's. After, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. It's like, I'm still having like, uh, I'm so like an Adam Sandler. Almost. Yeah. Like oh, I'm Adam well Sandler into my, it. I'm well into my adulthood, you know, like I, but I do get like the, you I know, I do think maybe, you know, and Hey, I'm not a serious guy, but I do think maybe the more serious theme of it being, Hey man, I'm really proud of you. And I'm glad Sorry. you did that. <laughs> and I want you to remember that Robert probably would have yelled at you. <laughs> You know Robert, the, just a hot you know, Speaking of Robert, because you're about to see his pitch, and I'm sure it's okay. Yeah. I heard him say the other day, he said, yeah, you know, Shama owes his career to John Chris. <laughs> he said that. And I was like, Robert, don't say that. Anyway, I owe my career to to, oh. uh, to the Scooter Braun of Christian comedy, <laughs> Robert Thorell. <laughs> I was like, yo, Robert, don't say that. And then he was like, you know, and, and Gunner. And I was like, whoa, hey, don't even bring up Gunner. Don't he was like, he was like, Gunner wants to give kids cigarettes in Hollywood again. I was like, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> and yeah, Cruz, he was like, I don't even want Cruz here. <laughs> I said, Robert, we can get Cruz. And he said, I, he can cruise his ass back home. <laughs> wow. So I just want you to know the kind of guy he is. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, he's the kind yeah, of guy who would spin yeah, your name for a solid yeah. pun to insult you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> if this was an actual like exec meeting, it would be so funny if the like, half the time you were just trash talking the next guy who was coming. Hey, we should uh, try it. We should. Why not? Yeah. That was a great idea. You're amazing. You're a lot of good ideas. I can tell if he's schmoozing or... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness. Yes, Chris, sorry. Uh, my last question, like, so you went through the main cast, and then yes. who would be playing The Rock? Oh, uh, Dwayne Johnson. Okay. Uh, how about Chris Rock? Oh, that would actually be better. If it was a voiceover type role, like if the Rocky, the influencer coach, had a commercial, I think Chris Rock would be a great choice. It would be funny if, like, you actually hired, like, like the firm... Like for the commercials, yeah. Like actually hired an act, so like it would it would be one of those like like John Malkovich, oh, like yeah, you, know yeah. what, you know what I mean. That had to be John Malkovich. I'm just saying that like in the movie they're playing themselves, 
as uh, like yeah, I'm yeah. Hi- I'm being hired to voice <laughs> Rocky. But uh, what, what I was saying earlier is I do think it, it kind of speaks more about kind of the hustle culture of people in oh, their twenties and thirties. Yeah. And uh, not to get you know I'm dropping my persona because I do actually really like this. And uh, I do think it speaks a lot about this like mm-hmm. guru like everyone on YouTube's an yeah. expert. And I, I think mm-hmm. it's kind of depressing. And, and this kind of shows that like. You talked about the ending being like it just doesn't work out. Yeah. It's like that's what happens when you think you know everything based off of a YouTube video. Yeah. Um, that being said, I never went to acting school, so. I but, also uh, never went to acting school. I just, technically, well, I went to Anderson University for a year, but I didn't really. You just needed to. What did you take while you were there? I was in theater, but after that one year experience, I never did theater again. Yeah, he's like, I, I completed it. Yeah. Do you think by not completing it? No, I don't know. I don't know this podcast about you. But yeah. like, do you think by not completing it, do you feel like if you would have completed it, you would have been the person you are, or do you think by dropping out, you became the person that like, that one for okay. sure? Yeah, I, uh, man, I, I grew up in theater and I loved it. Sorry again, sorry to no, this is coming, but this yeah, is no, about yeah. You, <laughs> 10, 10, 10. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Yeah, I, I grew up in theater, so like I, 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 I had a lot of love for it. But then that freshman year, it's so bad. Like there were people freshman year, like uh, uh, sabotaging each other's mm-hmm. auditions yeah. and stuff. And it's like, guys, it's a lot of we're at Anderson University. Yeah. <laughs> where do you, where do you think, what do you think this is gonna go yeah. to? You know. Yeah. So it was, it was that very strange. Really yeah. So I, yeah, I'm glad I uh, got out of there. Also, no one watched movies there. It was very strange. I kept referencing stuff, which I, I guess I, looking back, I guess I was that film bro. But, hey, but anytime I talk to somebody who went to Anderson, I always go, do you know Gunnar Willis? No, I love Gunnar <laughs> Just, just rambling. Like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I, I also the golden boy. Yeah. They're, gonna, they're gonna give you a, a, a doctorate, an honorary. Doctorate. That would be the like funniest a, thing in the be, world. That would be the fun. Yeah. All right, fellas, yeah. I've taken up a lot of time. Uh, I do want to say I'm gonna drop the jokes and say thank you very much for being here. Um, this has been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed my movie. We did. And uh, now it's time for Robert. Boo! I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Throw rotten fruit. Boo. Hello, studio heads. So great to see you guys. Uh, I know you just saw a pitch from Chase. What a great guy, man. Just first off, like <laughs> I was talking to him a little in the hallway, and he was just saying he was just the nicest person ever. He was just saying like how good wow. I am, and like how good all of you guys are. So I'm just really, really be glad to follow such a just a wholesome dude as that guy. <laughs> You know, this business is really tough, but it's nice to know that even though we're competing, like we could still be friends and everything. Oh, so, man. <laughs> Studio Heads, I have an exciting movie that I think you guys are going to want to buy. I know like big IP stuff is big right now. We've been kind of making the same movies over and over again. We're looking for something fresh, original. I think I got that. Uh, I think to give you guys the best impression of what I think my film is, I'm actually going to play you my rip reel first, and then oh. I'll kind of explain a little more so what it is after that. Legend foretells of a place far beyond our realm, one of splendor, excitement, and wonder. Who knows what exists beyond? Oh man, the, the TV's not working again. Sorry kids, we're gonna have to find something else to do. And just another day in the white. Boy, white is all you need. Just white, very light gray. Was that a hand? Is that a what? Whoa, whoa! Yeah, yeah, pitch blue, yeah. yeah. Every time I see your face, someone they get high. Hello, baby, I'm on TV, I'm streaming Welcome online. Welcome to Woohoo Island! Compete in a tournament of five sports and you can get back home. But do you know, legend tells of a chosen one who will win the tournament and take their rightful place as king of Woohoo Island. And with it, the untold riches that lie in its depths. It won't be fine, it won't be fine, it won't be fine. Kids, I think we got this! 
Matt, I can never make a me like that. He's a guy of the neighbors. He's where it's at. Sports, killing it at the main resort. Then Matt showed up. FNFC on the court. Oh. I don't know what this island is, but we'll get through this as a family. Look, I'm playing Wii Sports, I ball on the court. How is this game still better than four? I'm working my fitness with tennis matches to serve. Can I get a witness? Let me get this, I mean business. Oh no. It's Red XX. We are doing the Wii Sports movie <laughs> for you today. <laughs> you know, Nintendo adaptations have been big this year. <laughs> We're about to go even bigger. Sheesh. Man. This is what you were doing. Let me play the trailer. <laughs> dude. Bro, when the beat came on, that dude was just skydiving. Dude. dude was sick, I'm man. I'm free. Okay. The two. The first off. Okay. No. We. You're gonna have to wait. <laughs> we. We. There are a few things I need to point out. Okay. One, the concept is already amazing, right? But the fact that you had frames, you had a, you had a little me. In the 2001 color sequence, 10 out of 10 right there, yeah. and then the tree of life. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I didn't realize the Wii Sports movie needed the existentialism, but uh, for, it absolutely uh, did. For some odd reason, whenever this comes out, it's you just gonna be it's just gonna be voiced by Chris Pratt. Hundred <laughs> percent. All of all of it, Chris Pratt. We're already talking to his. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that's oh. from the childhood of a, of a millennial like, eventually becomes Chris Pratt. Yeah. You know, Lego, Garfield, yeah. comic yeah. books. Yeah. It's yeah. like how everything eventually evolves into crabs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All IP evolves into Chris Pratt. <laughs> Jeez. Well, hey, this has been fun, right? Man, oh, all right. Man. We'll see you all next year. Congrats, oh, Robert. Nice. Okay. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay. Before we before we get into this, okay. Okay. This okay. okay. So for for you to win, yes, you gotta get you gotta do a clean sweep, yes. right? I think I have to get two. I'm one ahead. Yeah. So tie, you get two. Yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. All three means you win. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Come on, guys. I was so nice to you. <laughs> you were. Okay. Hey, it's uh, it's show business, not show, <laughs> not show friendship. Okay. I'm here to convince you that a Wii Sports movie not only should exist, but it needs to exist. So we we've, we've been dipping into the IP of video games recently. I bet none of you knew that Wii Sports is the most sold Nintendo game ever, by far, that. over Mario, wow. over anything else. Huh? Nintendo Wii has sold 82.6 million Wait. units. <clears throat> oh, more than Mario? More than any individual Mario game. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Does that like That's count still crazy. with the copy that like came with the Wii? It does count that, yeah. Keep going. So, we're just, so we're just a little, huge, yeah. ubiquitous game in the culture. Everyone knows a little bit about. And the center of Wii Sports' giant success is it's one of the few games that is truly for everyone. Everybody could just pick up the controller and just instantly and intuitively know how to play it, which is part of what led to its popularity. The rules of sports are so universal, you don't have to learn additional rules. And finally, beyond that, like, the game was originally marketed like more so to moms than anyone else as a way to like get everyone in the market on board. And it had a huge resurgence <laughs> over the pandemic. 2020, people were replaying this. Uh, it became incredibly popular in nursing homes. So old people like this game too. <laughs> so one what? of the few products that has a universal broad appeal. So we think a movie would do very <clears throat> well. So. And of course, like the beauty of Wii Sports is it's something that everyone can enjoy and it brings together different people, different ages, races, classes, generations, everything. So we're really going to lean into that in the theme of this movie. So our logline is after a family of Mii's are transported to Woohoo Island, they must compete in a series of competitions to be crowned king of the island. Now, a fun thing about Wii Sports is it could be enjoyed on a very surface level, but with future iterations of the game, there's a surprising amount of lore, like kind of buried in the Woohoo Island <laughs> that we're going to explore a little bit. So act one, we're going to start, as you saw in the trailer, in the Miiverse. 
It is just a white void, an empty expanse. The Mies just live in a completely bland world. And we're focused on a dad and his two kids named Chris and Lucia. Now, the dad is trying to get the kids together to have a fun night of TV, but it can't get the TV to work. And the kids start bickering, they start fighting. They can't play any sort of game without getting into a huge argument. And this really stresses out the dad. But then a whistle blows and that summons all the Mies into the Times Square. They all line up in the middle of this circular pattern of light gray squares. And when that happens, Oh, by the way, these are our three main characters. The The two children are based on the two default me's that you see. Oh, <laughs> that's great. The family is bickering, but then they're summoned to the town square. There's this giant hand floating above them, and the dad looks really nervous. And this random me next to him is like, hey, kid, why, why is your dad so freaked out? And it's like, oh, well, last time we were all summoned and the giant hand appeared, you know, <laughs> it took our mom. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. Shoot. But then what has never happened in the Miiverse before is this portal opens up beside the hand and it's all these different flashing colors and lights unlike anything they've ever seen in their pure white void mm -hmm. and then the hand starts grabbing people it's grabbing at people and it grabs the entire family the dad and the two kids it tosses them into the portal and they zoom through and they appear on this beautiful tropical island there's a group of about 12 of them they're like what are we doing here what has happened? What took us to this place? What, what even is this place? I've never touched grass like this before. What is this? And they hear a booming voice echo through the wind. And we want this to be played by the same voice actor that did the uh, the good job and all that oh, in, the, yeah. in the Wii games. <laughs> <laughs> and the voice tells them that, hey, you are on Woohoo Island. You have been chosen to be contestants in this tournament. You will compete in a tournament of five sports. And at the end of the tournament, you get to go home. But here's the deal. There's been a prophecy that is foretold, a chosen one, who will win the tournament and take his rightful place as king or queen of Woohoo Island. And they will also gain all the untold riches that are hidden in the depths of the island. Now, of course, uh, Chris and Lucia, they're all over this. They're like, oh, well, I'm definitely going to win those untold riches. Mm -hmm. and he's like, no, brother, I'm going to win the untold riches. And they start fighting. And no, everything. brother. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, all the Mies are kind of freaked out. They don't know what to do. But uh, this is a pretty cool place. This is much better than their hometown. And mm -hmm. so they're going to compete and they're going to see if they could, you know, become king of the island. Now, the first sport is tennis. Now, everyone is being judged individually, but out of the five sports, which, you know, tennis, baseball, bowling, golf, boxing, two of those sports are team sports. And so they are put into random teams. So I'll go through the characters that have been summoned to this island. So we have Elisa. <laughs> Elisa is basically like a, like a middle-aged wine mom type person. She's a mother of young children. She's stressed out all the time. We have Thelma, who is an old woman from a nursing home. And then there's another woman named Thelma. We're gonna call her Other Thelma. She's also, a, <laughs> also <laughs> an old woman. <laughs> and then we have, this guy's name is Quonk. Uh, you know how <laughs> yes. when you got the Mies, after yeah. you've made people that look like your family, you instantly try to make the most messed up looking Mie you yeah. can? <laughs> like really wide eyes, <laughs> like distort the mouth and everything. Yeah. Charlie Day is a good choice for that too. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's what Quonk is. And no one really knows what to do with Quonk. He's obviously not right in the head or anything. And all these people are put on the same team as Chris and his dad. And Chris is a little upset by this. Because he has the mom, the two older people, whatever this is. <laughs> and the other team is so much better. The other team, we got Mia, who is a college-age girl. We have Yoko, who is a mom about the same age as our other mom. But she is like a fitness influencer mm -hmm. mom. Mm -hmm. She's basically the mom that's got like everything yeah. figured out perfectly fit, yeah. eats healthy, yeah. parents her children perfectly, and posts it all online so all the other moms yeah. can see. Kind of like that, the perfect family from Mitchell's and the Machines. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's great. <laughs> we have Sakura, who is actually a professional athlete, so that's <laughs> why. And then we have Alex, who 
He's really just a chill dude. Like he just, mm-hmm. he passes the vibe check. He's not mm-hmm. even that great at sports, but everyone still loves him. And mm-hmm. like, he, <laughs> he is such a chill, cool person that you can't even like be mad at him. Cause the mm-hmm. moment you try to hate on Alex, like yeah. everyone else is like, whoa, what are you, what are you doing, man? That's Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally on team two, we have Matt. Now, <laughs> Matt, is great at pretty much everything. He is especially great at boxing. And the reason Matt is such a main character is when we Sports had a resurgence around the pandemic, Matt was at the center of this. He was like the most memed character. <laughs> he is the most recognizable avatar of all of the memes. And of course we need a formidable actor to play him. So we've gone with Aegis Elba. That's our top pick to play Matt. Amazing. It's good. He's also in the, uh, he's also in the, the end sequence of the trailer when he's like, ah, oh, me, 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 Matt. No, Matt, me. I'm a me named Matt. <laughs> Gone. I love that. We're going to Summer 2025. <laughs> like, Wait, what? <laughs> Idris Elba's in this? <laughs> yeah, so here's a rundown on our team. Team one, Chris, his dad, Elisa, Thelma, other Thelma, and Quonk versus Lucia, Mia, Yoko, Sakura, Alex, and Matt. The first sport is tennis. And of course, team two is sweeping. Matt's doing well. Sakura's doing well. Uh, the two old women, old women are kind of struggling. Like it's it's kind of a kid to like when someone doesn't know how to work their controller and they're like oh, yeah. swinging at the wrong time and yeah, everything. Yeah. Quonk is just kind of running around in the back and the the dad isn't even that great of an athlete. So Chris is the only one trying to carry this team and he's really upset because he wants those riches. Uh Meanwhile, there's a doubles match with Chris and his dad versus Lucia and Matt. They absolutely sweep. Team one isn't doing great. Chris is very low in the rankings, just above, you know, everyone else in his team. And so afterwards, Lucia is really rubbing it in to Chris that she won that game. Now, there's a little bit of mingling time before the next match, and this is where they kind of explore a little bit. Now, there are a lot of really fun-looking locations on Woohoo Island in the Wii Sports Resorts game, and a lot of them clue that there was an ancient civilization present on this island before the bees. (laughs) And so Chris and Lucia find these ruins that are near where all the bees are hanging out, and they discover a disc that has some ancient runes on it. They both touch it at about the same time and they have this shared vision and it's really blurry, but they could kind of make out like little specks of light and they hear something about the chosen one it possesses the discs. And it's like, well, we're holding this disc with the runes. And it's like, well, we both, who touched it first? It's like, we kind of both touched it at the same time. So it's like, I don't know. He said discs plural, like there might be more around here. So it's like, they, they obviously, they are still in competition with each other, but they're the only two people that know this. They're going to keep it a secret, and it's in their best interest to kind of work together mm-hmm. to investigate. Our next match is golf. Now, golf, team one does a little better in. Everyone's being counted individually, and the dad, you know, he started this day wanting to spend time with his kids, and he uses this opportunity. He's played a lot of golf. This is his best sport. He shows his kids how to swing the clubs and he has a lot of fun doing it Mm -hmm. it's like i haven't gotten the chance to like teach you guys something like this in forever and they're all talking and playing golf and the golf really lets you get an overview of the island as a whole because it's like the biggest square footage of sport being played and they hear this voice and there's a (laughs) there's a cavern now this is this is in the Wii Sports Resorts game. There's a cavern, and you hear this little whispering in the wind if you stand in the right spot. <laughs> There's whispering in the wind in the game. Yes, yes, there is. <laughs> what, is so, what does it sound like? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like like the like the ghost ghost at the end of Lord of the Rings. The the the. <laughs> <laughs> you know whatever that quote is in the mountains <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. okay so after the golf game Chris and Lucia kind of go into this this cavern uh, no, I don't have a photo of it but uh, they hear a voice they see more hieroglyphics and runes they see another disc of runes they both launch towards it they grab it at the same time and they see a vision and they see all these hieroglyphics on the walls and basically what it tells them is that there was a civilization here before them and they lived in harmony on Woohoo Island. But then uh, 
All the Mies started arguing. There wasn't peace on Woohoo Island. And then this giant crack appears in the sky. And that basically like cracked a hole in space time and it launched all the Mies into where they live now. <laughs> so basically the chosen one is going to reset the space time and bring all the Mies back to their hometown on Woohoo Island. Uh, our midpoint is baseball. And baseball, all the teams are pretty easy. And this is where all the people in Team 1 really start to shine. It turns mm -hmm. out that uh, the two elderly women are surprisingly really good at baseball. That's great. And that really, like, sets the team dynamic mm -hmm. off a little bit. Team 1 is starting to win a little more. Mm -hmm. And Chris is pumped about this because he really needed this win mm -hmm. on the giant leaderboard. He's now close to the top, just behind Lucia. And they're going at it. Matt, of course, is still a formidable foe, so they're nearly tied. And the dad, basically throughout the game, Chris is having a hard time throwing the ball. And the dad is like, hey, I always wanted to play ball with my son. Here, let me let me show you how to throw the ball. He shows him how to throw the ball, and he's throwing strikes left and right. He's doing great. But then the final pitch of the game, it's tied up. The dad is at bat, and his daughter is pitching. And his daughter has a really hard time throwing. She she throws it, uh, it's a foul. She throws it again, another crazy foul. Chris is like, oh yeah, we got this. We're gonna win, we're gonna win. But then the dad, he starts feeling bad. And like right before the final pitch, he walks up to his daughter and is like, hey, never got to show you how to throw baseball. Let me let me show you how real quick you gotta do it. Like this. He's like, yeah, it was like they do it together. And then he goes back and she throws it and she strikes him out. And Chris is like furious about this. He's like, why did you do that? You're, we needed to win this game. We had it in the bag. You showed her how to do it. And it's like, I just want to have a good time with my kids. This is how we started this. And this, this is what makes me happy. And Chris, I don't understand it, but I like, she's thinking about it a little. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, all the me's are gathered together. This is the end of the first day. They're all talking and they kind of bonded a little bit. They're all like talking to each other. The two moms are like starting to close to each other the the athlete and the college kid are talking matt is the only one that's like super competitive he's like you can't be friends with the competition like that you know mm -hmm. and lucia and chris they go to this castle there is a castle in the game <laughs> and there they find another rune and this rune tells them basically the origin of what we're calling the crack which you know the crack in space time there's also some humor there, you know, mm -hmm. everyone's scared of the crack, but uh, <laughs> that's something for the adults, but uh, <laughs> they see a vision, they see the sky crack again, but then basically they see what they don't recognize, but we recognize as, as human people arguing, <laughs> and then <laughs> there's this giant crack in the space time, and what we see, there's this giant object going through the crack the light kind of dissipates and we see that it's a giant wee boat. <laughs> like a, a giant wee boat has cracked through the sky <laughs> and that's what did it. It was like, oh, so that's that's what caused the crack in the space time. And <laughs> Hold on. Were, were we remotes called wee motes? <laughs> yes, yes they were. <laughs> did y'all did know that? Yeah. No, but I'm happy I did. <laughs> That's an official term. We're all going to have to start saying it once this movie is being pushed out. Nintendo's very <laughs> like, particular about their... Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's very true, yeah. And yeah, this is this is what it looked like. <laughs> and so... <laughs> next word is boxing. Max and Lucy are starting to go a little easier on each other. They feel like they're more together than apart. Because it's like... One of us is the not chosen one. We gotta be at one or two. Grabs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh shoot, man! So Max and Lucy are more so working together, and they're actually starting to have a little fun now. And uh, they're struggling, but with the the mutual help of each other, they're making it to one and two on the leaderboard, or two and three once Matt gets in the ring. Because of course, boxing is Matt's best sport and he's knocking everybody out he's doing a number on dad he's doing a number on those women those athletes the college kid everyone the thelmas <laughs> the only person that is not phased by matt is quonk because it turns out like he's so messed up in the head that like boxing being hit doesn't really do anything to him <laughs> 
And the That's way Quonk fights is almost like the same as a button masher. He's just like, I don't know, I just like swing all over the place and I just like knock at all these people out. So That's really funny. <laughs> so top of the leaderboard, Matt. Chris is now two. Lucia is three. Bunch of other people. Quonk isn't last anymore. Final sport is bowling. And so the kids are like, okay. One of us has to win. Uh, they're put in two groups. They're bowling in two lanes. The winner of each lane will face off in a 1v1. Chris and Lucia are in the same lane with Matt. And so there's a lot of competition there. Mm -hmm. Top seed, bottom seed. And mm -hmm. so Chris and Lucia are bowling. Matt isn't as great at this as he is at every other sport, but he has such a lead. He's still number one. The dad is not doing great at bowling at all. But the kids are like, hey, you taught us how to place the swords. We're actually kind of good at this. We're going to show you how to do this. It's really simple. You know, you just line up. You want to curve a little bit, go mm -hmm. back and put like a little twist on it. Because, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the thing about Wii Sports Bowling is once you figure out the formula for bowling, you can just get strikes left and right. Yeah, yeah. And so the dad is slowly climbing up mm -hmm. in, his, in his league. But then uh, Lucia hits a gutter ball and this basically knocks her out of the top two. And so it's like, okay, Chris, you have to get top in this or we aren't we aren't going to get the island the chosen one isn't going to win the prophecy isn't going to mm -hmm. fill out we're just all going to go back home to the blank white void and so chris is lining up it's him versus matt matt hits a strike chris hits a strike matt hits a strike chris he hits the 710 split the dreaded 710 split. Mm -hmm. He can still make it though. He's just gotta, he's just gotta hit one pin right, and then it's gonna go over and knock the other pin over. And it's like, well, I'm the chosen one. I feel like I could do this. And he does it and he misses. He misses. Matt advances on. <laughs> and they're devastated. And but meanwhile, over at the other lane, the dad has gotten really good at bowling and he's managed to get to the top. So the final match is gonna be Matt versus the dad. But Chris and Lucia are, of course, just devastated. They walk outside, they sit outside, they think they failed, but then in the distance, they see the last rune. It's in this lighthouse. The bowling alley's right next to the, the, the Wii Sports lighthouse. And <laughs> they look into it and they have their final vision. And basically we see what led up to the crack in space time, which is <laughs> this dad and a mom, humans, we're seeing humans now. They're playing Wii with their kids, and their kids won't stop fighting over who's winning. They keep on accusing each other of cheating. Mm -hmm. They say, hey, that was unfair. No, this is unfair. They're fighting that leads to the little boy to get so aggressive. He forgets to put on that strap on the Wii boat, and he sends the Wii boat launching right into the TV, <laughs> and it breaks. But then what we haven't seen yet is we see a little in the future. The dad is back, but now there's no mom. And he looks sad. And the kids look sad too. But he brings home this new game, this new Wii game. And he pulls it out. And we see the CD. The, he puts the disc into the console. And the, we get a close up of like the light reflecting on the disc as it's spinning. And it's exactly what the portal looks like. And so they're like, oh, wait, this is the disc the prophecy was talking about. And I think if we're, if those people are supposed to be like us and like, our dad's the chosen one. And I was like, our dad has to win. And he has to win because, because like what, what led to Wuhu Island being destroyed in the first place, space time being messed up, was that everybody was getting too competitive and fighting with each other. But these things are supposed to bring us together. Like the mm -hmm. Wuhu Island is supposed to be a place where everybody just has fun with each other. And so they go back into the bowling alley. Uh, it's the climax, it's dad versus Matt, and Matt is bowling really hard. And they're now trying to convince Matt, who wants to be number one so bad that he, he can't win. And they're telling everybody about what happened and how like these sports are supposed to bring us together. We're not, we're not supposed to get angry at each other over this game. And like, look at, look at what has happened over the past two days. All these people that like wouldn't have become friends like have come together just over this tournament. And we see flashes of like the human equivalence of every bee. And so we see like the mom at home with her kids. We see the t 
old woman in her nursing home. We see the other Thelma in her nursing home. We see the college kids stressed out about a paper or whatever. We see the athlete and like all these different people, but they've all just become friends over the course of this movie. And, but Matt is getting angry. He's like, no, that's not how it works. Nobody has your back. Okay, I'm going to win this competition. I'm going to win this island. I don't care about any prophecy or anything. And they're trying to convince him. And it, we don't know if he's listening or not. He sets up for the final bull. Ball leaves his head. We hear it going down, and we don't know what it's going to make, but then we see that it, it was a gutter ball. He, he intentionally put the gutter ball in. Now the dad wins, and basically the voice comes back, and he's like, the chosen one has won. Now the portal between the Miiverse and Woohoo Island is restored, and everyone will live here, and the rightful king has returned. And they they ask the dad, uh, so what are you going to do with the untold riches on Woohoo Island? And he's like, I'm going to build... A resort. And basically, <laughs> that's going to tie into the sequel, Wii Sports 2, Wii Sports Resort. And the last scene is there's this giant thriving resort where all the bees get to come together and play sports with each other. And they all live happily ever after as a happy family. And so, basically, the thing we want to lean into is Wii Sports is so universal because it brings so many people together. And this movie is almost about, like, how odd it is that like a competition is what unifies people because competition it sounds like it's inherently about driving people apart pitting people against each other but it's all about the attitude that you know you come into the competition with if you come into it just wanting to love people and just like have a good time then like competitions and games are so powerful because everybody could bond over them and so that's what the Wii Sports movie is about Really good message. Also, it's low key kind of a, a creation story in a way. You mm -hmm. know, there was a paradise and these people got casted out. Yeah, I definitely love that part of yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they figured out that they couldn't earn their way back. They had to, you know, be in the right mindset to live in the paradise yeah. again. We don't want the Wii Sports movie to be overtly religious, but there's something about like religious storylines that are just yeah. so universal. How does, yeah. he, how does he do this? <laughs> I, I love, I, I, yeah, honey, what? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I feel like there's got to be like at the beginning because since there's also an ancient civilization, yeah. there's got to be like a grandpa that's like talking about this place that no one oh, believes yeah. it's real. It's yeah. like no, it's a real. It's like okay, you're just saying fairy tales, grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Amazing. a slowed down version? Of yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. yeah. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is, of course, like, After you know, the mashup of influences, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel oh, like wow. this is very similar oh, to wow. Onward because there's a very strong sibling dynamic mm -hmm. and there's a whole journey. Uh, I wrote the original pitch for this podcast right after watching the movie After Sun, which, of mm -hmm. course, if you haven't seen, it's all about children's relationships with their parents and how about things go over their head at a certain age, but they kind of intuitively pick up on things. But then when they look back as an adult, they understand their parent more. And that's kind of the journey these characters take. They understand their dad more at the end because the dad just wanted the family to come together mm -hmm. after their mom left or was not around for just whatever reason. He was just really trying his best yeah. and they weren't being nice to him. Uh, I want to draw a lot from sports anime. This is just my favorite sports anime. Oh, it's a great one. Yeah. yeah. And then finally the Lego movie just because of the, the human Pratt. component. And Chris <laughs> <Pratt. Yeah. laughs> Animation style, like part of what makes it so great. I know you saw a lot of clips of like live action, but we definitely wanted CGI and with the iconic me design i do to make it like you know how like animation has just been like pushing boundaries recently and we definitely want to contribute to that so i think a cool thing we could do aside from just leaning into the really clean peaceful aesthetic that we sports has mm -hmm. like it feels like a world you just want to live in forever but we also want to lean into kind of the tv aspect because you know mm -hmm. the whole crack it's just like the tv cracking mm -hmm. when the tv was hit so like in the sky we can see these little aberrations of like TV mm, pixels, mm -hmm. just like this cool texture mm -hmm. in the skies and everything. Woohoo Island. Uh, I definitely want it really inspired by nature photography. I took mm -hmm. a lot from Terrence Malick. So basically that was CGI. Oh, that is the funniest. Terrence Malick being an influence on this movie <laughs> is so funny. 
And finally, the crack, of course, is like what I'm most excited about because we get to play with like the glass texture, but also like the way that color messes up like yeah. around a TV crack. I think like this is my favorite one mm -hmm. that we could draw from. And that's my pitch. See you next time. I would suck. I don't... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, that was that was great. That was yeah. really great. Oh boy. Okay. I mean, I don't have a ton of questions. I feel like we we. I feel like the judges have to discuss. But I feel okay. like uh, you, you kind of you, you were in detail with the, with uh, pretty much the whole thing with Thoreau. So I don't really have a lot of questions. Do you guys have any questions? This is more of like a just a personal okay like question to you personally, yeah. Robert. Yeah. Um, what do you think would happen if Quonk got his hands on a Wii Fit board? <laughs> <laughs> well, we definitely want to tease towards future installments because we have the Wii Sports Resort set up, but also Wii Fit is a whole area we haven't touched. That would honestly be like a great end gag is he finds that and just you know goes crazy on it. It's like jittery, like it, it, it's going so hard that the, the program itself doesn't know what to do with it because Quonk <laughs> is just so much energy. I forgot to mention that when we're flashing to the real life counterparts of everyone, when we flash to Quonk, it's just going to be Charlie Day with his kids. He's like, I don't know how to work this thing. And it's like, Dad, you look so messed. You look so messed up. It's like, I don't know what to do with this. It's like, Dad, that's not a name. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> that's really great. That's really funny. And the yeah. trailer, uh, the, the trailer for. The Wii Sports, uh, no, the Wii movie with uh, where Quonk is fully, uh, like, like his character is fully rounded out. It starts off with another character going, Quonk? And he goes, oh, wait, I've got abs now. <laughs> I'm jacked. I don't know what happened. <laughs> he Oof. takes up boxing. And figures out he's good at it. Yeah. I'm I played it by strings and it worked. Yeah. Huh? I'm excited for Quonk to be the new, like, uh, uh, what's that snowman? From from Frozen. Olaf. 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 Yeah, the one that's like 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 the first year you're like Quonk. I love Quonk, and then in five years you're like I have enough of Quonk. I can't go to in Walmart without seeing Quonk all over the. Quonk is on loofahs. Yeah, beach yeah. towels. Yeah, on go karts. You oh, know, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> Like he wasn't that lovable. Yeah. 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 yeah, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like oh it's plenty my. of merch opportunities, and like I like Charlie Day, but like if you if you have a vendetta against anyone really talented, we could put them in the Quonk role and just like. I, 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 I think uh, I, uh, I think it'd be hard to find something someone better than Charlie Day in that role. Uh, I mean. Any anyone from It's Always Honey cast that would work. Danny DeVito, also <laughs> another great choice. <laughs> hey kid, I gotta show you my new weed. <laughs> I'm just quonking all over the place. I'm just quonking, you know. I messed up typing the name. Yeah. But I kind of like it. Yeah, yeah, quonk. yeah, yeah. It works. Yeah. It works. Yeah. 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 Danny, what's quonk? It's quonk. It's quonk. Uh, you know what I mean? you quonking? You've been quonked? That's what I'm doing. I know, I know you guys are like high up in the studio system. There's been so many rumors about the Fantastic Four, but we just need Sunny Cass. Fantastic Four. It's clearly oh, the right shoot. move to get right? Oh, I, um, yes. Uh, yes, yeah. and it's funny because it, there's what five of them, right? So one of them would be Doctor Doom, which is even <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. Well, sorry, Pedro. I, mean, I don't know what to lead. I mean, <laughs> what do y'all think? Okay, I want. Okay, I want to know you, you guys because it, it like presentation wise, there's obviously a strength in in Robert's court. Yeah, right. But I'm thinking from like it because we're the, we're the executives, so we're trying to think of like a finished product of after developing it, right? Yeah, I think the Wii Sports. If we're going purely like monetarily, which I definitely do not want to do because that hurts my heart to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, I feel like the Wii Sports movie is more of like a like a, a 
oh, uh, people are going to go see that uh-huh. just because it's how do they make right. a movie from Wii Sports. But if I'm going from like a what has the potential to be my favorite movie of the two, it's close. But I don't know. There's something about the fact that kind of the freedom of not being an official IP and like what the pet rock like could be and all that you could do there. And the fact that Chase wants to go like as funny and as cynical, like there's a, I feel like there's, I mean, it's two very, very different movies, <clears throat> but I feel like even though Robert had like the more polished presentation and, right. you know, I feel like both are pretty, pretty equally strong in like what the potential is. That's where I stand. What do you guys feel like? <clears throat> well, I mean, I think the Pet Rock movie, since it's based on a prior experience, if it was rooted, if it was pitched as a biopic, then maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I feel the same way where you said like it has the potential to be mm-hmm. a favorite. Mm-hmm. But would it be everybody's no? That's favorite? okay. I feel you. You know, so you're mm-hmm. you're thinking more from like a a not personal like a, right. Like, a, like a if we're trying like if we're trying to you know as execs here, mm-hmm. we're trying to create the next right, right, right. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I I, I agree that if we're going from a <clears throat> like. You know, if we're, we're what's my vote in what's going to be kind of a zeitgeist type of movie? Yeah, I feel like yeah, We Sports is more. I mean, Lego like Movie, I feel like was a good reference because uh-huh. like that when that movie came out, no one expected it to be the hit that it was. But it like as soon as the trailer came out, they're like they made a movie about what? Legos what? and it was actually what? good. You know, like I, I I I totally agree with you there. What do you think, Chris? I don't know, like. I was pretty set before you guys started talking. <laughs> what were you set in before I started talking? About? I mean, just definitely like, I like fun movies, mm-hmm. you know, and just like the, the energy that the like, and the brightness that the Wii Sports brought. Mm-hmm. But then you guys started to talk about like a biopic version of the Pet Rock. <laughs> and I think if like the Pet Rock itself, mm-hmm. like played a main character. <laughs> And that, okay, not, not, not in like the not in like yeah. a, a weird way, but like like the focus was on the product and not necessarily like the people around it, mm-hmm. and just like the weirdness of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I would I would want to see that too. I get what you're saying. I feel like though, if we lean that way, that's not taking the pitch at the like what it was sold. No, you're right. 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 Yeah. And I feel like that's. Um, but I will say, I will argue again for like, I do like the idea of, yeah, it's, it, I think the silliness is baked in on the Pet Rock. I feel like I'm kind of, I'm kind of like in Pet Rock's corner kind of defending it a little bit more. Cause it's I, like, I feel like, like the Wii Sports movie is an obvious win, right? Yeah. But, um, like at the box office, like that's like, it's, it's there. It's, uh, in, you know, the, the, everything fits already. He's pretty, pretty easily. But the thing I love about the pet rock movie is that, uh, it's a movie about like the vapidness of, mm. you know, and the fact that the central thing is so fucking worthless, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I really do like that, uh, that aspect of it. And I like how, you know, I, I think it can be a fun, fun movie, but obviously a very different type of fun. I think it's just, I feel like they're, they're very different, you know. Um, I don't know. I, f- I feel like uh, uh, the Wii Sports movie is a movie that you could easily just like, oh yeah, anytime, let's just watch the Wii Sports movie. And eventually mm-hmm. my kids are going to love it so much that I'm going to fucking hate it but you know right now the first you know 15 times i've watched it it's great right right well the pet rock i feel like has the as the pitch was sold has the the framework and the and the build to be something a lot yeah like deeper and something that like like is it again a very different movie but a very you know very rewarding experience while also being like the pet rock movie (laughs) you know what i mean so 
So I guess we're we're uh, <clears throat> well. I guess how do we want to approach this then? Yeah, I guess that is the question. That you is know, the question. We want to approach yeah. it based on the being like this episode is called rival pitches. So the pitches are against each other. If we have to, mm. if we have a list of like you know. We do have a list of concept, story, character, commercial, people likely to watch, trailer. Okay. You know, <clears throat> how we hit those, you know, how yeah. we grade those against each other. Okay. Uh, that's fair. I think that's fair. If yeah. you just want to go like thing by thing and see what how we feel. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So how do we feel about concept for both? You're right, Gunner, about like the message of Pet Rock. Like that would hit the culture so hard right now. And I feel like like we sport like obviously the people are gonna go again, the Lego movie. Yeah. But with because we're at a kind of turning we're kind of like at that bridge of like the the eighties into the nineties of where like these like our generation and younger are like we're we're wanting something that like can talk to us like adults. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So I feel like you start getting ads on TikTok about a pet rock movie, and you're like, "What is that?" It's gonna be the same. It's gonna be the same reaction as the Wii Sports movie, right? Yeah. It's gonna be like they made a movie out of this, mm-hmm. and then you watch the trailer of the pet rock movie, and it's like, "Hey, this is about how like empty everything is right now." And did we feel this? And people are gonna be like, "What? They made the pet rock movie about that?" You know? I feel like there's like yeah, a yeah. They, they have. So I, I I do feel very strongly about the concept for both, um, because the thing is is that like. The Pet Rock movie was not the, the Wii Sports movie was marketed and designed as a kids movie, as it should. Or the Pet Rock movie, I think, was very clever in not doing the same thing. I think if it was a kids movie versus kids movie thing, the Wii Sports would win. Yeah. But the fact that this is like a and <laughs> so you've somehow made a Pet Rock movie not vapid yeah. is hilarious. And you know, True. so so that's that, but that's my thing. So story wise, how do you guys feel for the Wii Sports movie? Yeah, let's just say, let's start. We'll start. We'll do Robin and Chase. So I gotta, I gotta go ten. Dude, I'm agreeing with you, Dan. Yeah, I think he really thought that out. I mean, really, I, just hearing, even just hearing the like the theme song from the jump, yeah, I was like, nah, yeah, man, come yeah. on now. I think, I think the the structures there. It's ob- It's obvious. I mean, it's obvious that they both know story, but it's obvious that like. Robert put a lot of thought mm-hmm. into the structure of it. An unnecessary amount of thought. <laughs> it's true. I didn't sit there thinking, like, how much time did you Why? But dude, when you was talking about, like, the Wiimote, like, breaking into the sky and everything, I was like, and then he was like, by the way, it's called a Wiimote. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, shit. What? Yeah. I Googled yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I will say, I do think, I absolutely think that as much as I think the concepts are on par, I do think Robert has the edge on the story. Yeah. I do think that like, I think the pet rock would, would require a little bit more development than mm-hmm. the Wii Sports would. Mm-hmm. So where are you guys putting the story for Chase? I put the story at seven. Okay. That's what I put too. I'm going to do an eight, but I, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, That's okay. You yeah, can just yeah, tell yeah. us that you hate us gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's more bad. Uh, okay. Characters. I mean, I think Wii Sports movie definitely had rounded, you know, with Charlie Day and. Uh, yeah, I feel like he, had, but they were very. Um, I think, I, I I think they were more fun. Again, you, you guys finish your thoughts. I didn't want to like. I didn't want to take over. Mm. But. Uh, I mean, it just seemed to be. It seemed to be presented in a way where I'm like, oh man, I could see that. Yeah, and I would. That's like fair. That. That's fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that Robert put. A lot of like thought into the side characters, but then the like main characters were. Well, I guess was it supposed to be the like stereotypical family? Yeah, was yeah. That what I, he was like going for. Yeah, that's where I'm at. It feels. It still feels like. Uh, it feels like the 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 fun for the characters for Robert were the side characters, which is you know like that is those are usually the fan favorites, so it it makes sense with the, with the uh, the, the medium, mm. but. Uh, I feel like, and I feel like it's the opposite with Pet Rock to where like the main character and like his journey and like what, I guess that's, that's the whole story yeah. is that guy, yeah. right? Where the side characters felt pretty undercooked. So I, th- I'm going, 
I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Rob a seven characters, and I'm gonna give. I don't know. What are you guys thinking for for Chase? What other characters did he have than the two? It was the two friends and the Hasbro. And then the Hasbro. Yeah. So really, it's it's like, are you going to go with the strength of the main character versus the strength of the side character? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I went with seven for the uh, Pet Rock movie. Yeah, I'm going to do the same. I, I think I'm going to do seven on both because I feel like the weaknesses and strengths of both kind of even out. Commercial appeal. It's, I mean, we sports movies. Yeah, like we ten, yeah, yeah we sports like, is a ten. It's because it's so weird, but it's like he said, so yeah. universal. Yeah, I think that's like a. It's like people, one of the best selling video games. Like everyone knows Wii Sports. Yeah, yeah. You know? Internationally, too. Yeah. Like, I bet. And I think that little dash of existentialism is like so right for this time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, right. it's like, oh, cool. I get my, I, you know, I, I, I get my ice cream and cake. Um, I will, I think, I think because it's a pet rock movie, it's a very similar type of thing, but I, I agree that it's not as commercially appealing i'm gonna give i'm gonna give it an eight i gave i gave we sports a 10 and then pet rocket eight what are you guys giving it i think i'm gonna give it a, on the likely on the commercial appeal a nine the commercial appeal i gave pet rock a six that's fair yeah yeah so we're kind of we're kind of a little all over the place there yeah. yeah and then likelihood to watch i would absolutely 10 watch both of these yeah same true And and then the Wii Sports trailer is a thousand percent a ten. Uh, and then the <sighs> Chase's trailer is uh, it's not as strong for sure, but st- all of the all of the the TikTok and influencer stuff really helped sell it. Uh, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm gonna. I think the, yeah, how much money? Film. I mean, we we sports is gonna make a billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Probably, yeah. Probably, 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 probably. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna write. Uh, Does it matter? So I can uh, walk out of here. Phil and I was uh, fighting for my morals, but I don't disagree with you. <laughs> I think I think uh, if we're going, it's just like the the pet rock movie is one of those that could weirdly pop off. Like once it comes out and yeah. like work, like I don't think it would have the greatest first day, but then people would be like, "Yo, you yes, guys gotta go I see agree. this yeah, movie," I agree, you know. I agree. Yeah. And then I think that like sometimes those movies, like like for their first like opening month, can do crazy numbers. Yeah. Even if that yeah. first weekend sucks. Yeah. You know. I agree. Okay, so if we're going off of just numbers, it's obvious that we sports won. Yeah. But here's the thing. Let's talk game. He just needs one to tie it. Do we want that? That that's that's a good point, Gunner. Is we have deciding. Yeah. Power. And here's the thing. It's like, like, I do, I do agree with all these numbers. Yeah. Right. But I, I personally, am such a fan of like, like the 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 ten here with the concept is such like an enthusiastic ten for yeah. me mm-hmm. that like, if we could agree with it, I would I would be the one to like I'd be willing to be the the one vote. But I, I guess we just gotta. I don't know. Does but here's the thing. I want, the reason I want to talk about it is because, like, it's a rival pitches, right? Right. So Rob came prepared. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you know, like I, I mean, just from like if a, it's a if it's a, if it was a wee boxing match between yeah. the pet rock movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the wee sports movie yeah you know who's mad wee sports movie is yeah. really KOing yeah movie. yeah so here's the here's the good question I want I want you guys to honestly tell me 
Because I'm, I'm on the fence. That's why I'm asking. If we do the tie, that means the vote for the pitches would be a 2-1. Hmm. And it would only be a tie because he already had an advantage. Yeah. Right? So it would mean that the we, we Sports won the pitch, but the overall season, they're tied. What do you guys, do you, or do you guys feel like it was so strong that he just genuinely deserves the win? Honest thoughts. <laughs> I'm going to say it, yes. Yeah. Chase is going to fix I, I like, mean, <laughs> uh, are we being recorded right now? I didn't yeah. Even know. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I agree, but I had a fear for Chase. <laughs> fear from Chase. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want no. I don't want this to be a vote because <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah no, I don't want that to be. Uh, but might have a sniper rifle pointed yeah. at me. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think yeah. we were just presented like yeah. I think Robert's presented like. I mean, I didn't even expect him to freaking put in as much effort. Like that was just like way too much. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just. Dude, the trailer had felt me like I'm like behind my head. A Netflix executive right now. Like, am I? That's that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. So yeah, I mean, I you know, I got, I think we got to give credit where credit is due. Sadly, <laughs> reluctantly. Okay, here's what I want to do. We're gonna do. We're gonna do freaking like tribal count. I've been watching Survivor. I've been loving it. <laughs> So I want to bring so, him. So many of y'all been watching Survivor. Dude, it's so good. I didn't. I, I was like, I hate reality TV. I'm never gonna watch this. My friend's like, you should watch it with us. Current season, dude. Oh my god. I'm like Wednesday night. I get Mexican food with my girlfriends or my fiance's family, and I go home and watch Survivor. It's the best night of my is life. Is that the reality TV show? Yes, it is amazing. And I don't. Really? I hate reality TV, but it is so fun. Sheesh, dude. Man. It's I so have to get out of this dude, It's great. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bring him out here. It's like, okay, you get 30 seconds each. Do your mm. last thing, and then we're going to do vote, vote, vote. Okay. That sound good to you guys? Yeah, that sounds it. good. Okay, but I think we, we're done with like the our, our talking. What are they saying to her? The tribe has spoken? The tribe has spoken, yeah. The tribe has spoken. All right, come back. So here's how I want to do this. Okay. We talked about it. So this was a, a like suit like unreal close. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we haven't gotten our final vote yet. We've oh, all talked about it. We're not oh. gonna. We've already talked. We've. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you each thirty seconds to make your last case, and then we're gonna go vote, vote, vote. Oh, that's good. That sound okay. good? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. good. All right. So to make it fair. Rob first, and then Chase. We're gonna do flips. Okay. Uh, Robert, Thirty seconds begins in three, two, one. Okay. Should make a Wii Sports movie because again, just like the video, it's something that appeals very broadly and more so like it's weaven for thematically into the film that games are something that brings a lot of people together. And honestly, like that, that's why the game had a resurgence. There's no business for a game that old Ten with seconds. graphics that terrible to be so big but it's because everybody feels good playing games together and this movie could be an extension of that it could bring people together and it all, a lot of money too you know <laughs> that was good that's good pressure's on we need to all okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> alright ready uh, 3 2 1 look all I'm gonna say I really did try my best I'm very proud of what I made I think that it was it's a good story about something that's relevant to now. It's something I think about a lot, which is these influencers. And I also want to point out, the beginning of his trailer said, white is all you need. That's right. Just white and very light gray, which is very all lives matter. There's my case. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Three. Look, oh, you just have people that one. like work on the word. Wait to tackle. Every- <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Way to paint paint your co-host as something he's I not. Know. I know. Okay. All right. All right. Shama? Uh first of all, great work to the both of you. Thank you. Um this has been really fun. More fun than it should be. <laughs> I don't know what I expected when I came over here. <laughs> uh but I 
I'm going to go with Robert. Understandable. So just so everyone at home is following along, it is now uh, tied. Yeah, so that's a lot of weight on us, Gunner. Yeah. Huge. Huge. Do you yeah, have anything else? Going. And I, uh, no, I, I, I didn't choose you because you're the godfather to my three kids, <laughs> or launched my career, <laughs> or gave me a loan of $7 million in 2017 <laughs> to kickstart Shama Brand. <laughs> I'm, I'm still waiting on that. <laughs> um, is it my turn? Yes. So when I, whenever I step foot into a movie theater, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a lot that I look for in a film. Exquisite, mm. you know, you got the smell of buttery popcorn. You hear that crunch underneath your shoes because yeah. the floors are nasty. I want you to guys add the spe- the sound effects. Oh, That's why yeah, yeah. yeah. Cole Kidman, <laughs> Brie Manunos. <laughs> you know, I look at you know the the intensity of the movie, the message behind it, mm. and and the overall funness. But then the most important qualification for me is what movie is it harder to find a moment to go pee during? Oh, and I think that that quality is better found in Robert's Wii Sports movie. Understand it. So I'm going with the Wii Sports movie. So uh, if you keep it up at home, if Gunner picks Robert, Robert wins. Gunner picks me. We are tied. Let me start out by saying that uh, I was very impressed with both the pitches, and I would very much like to see both. So, as a, <laughs> it's really tough because I will be honest. So the quality of the of the pitch of the del, the the delivery, mm-hmm. right? Rob, you, a home run, right? Right, right, one hundred. It's obviously that you s- spent so much time. On that. <laughs> it was it, it really sold. I'm so nervous and I don't know why. <laughs> I think, okay, okay. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go with my heart, man. The, as, as much as I would watch it a million times and I love it so very, 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 very much. And I think it was perfect. What's bringing me to chase is the fact that it is a movie about the vapidness of the consumerism world we're in today and it's a movie about the pet rock so i'm gonna give you the time i'm giving it to chase (laughs) you just spoke to my heart with it man (laughs) i'll I'll take a time (laughs) which this sets up next year even better (laughs) so yeah that's it season three of rival pitches has ended with a tie wow Wow. I just want you to know what's really <laughs> infuriating is you were like, you can tell Robert worked so hard on this. He did it today. Huh? I started at hey, like 9 man. p.m. last night, but yeah. Dude, dude, I try to explain this to people. <laughs> that, that oh, la- Robert taps into a level of creativity that yeah. I have yet to see anybody I know tap into. Yeah. It's a different well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't even. I try less, knowing that I'm working with Robert. <laughs> I'm like, he's gonna put in the needed creative effort to fulfill whatever project we're doing. God, yeah. that's yesterday, yeah. man, I hate. You. How long did people work on? Oh, today. The, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it, it should be noted we did pitch these earlier oh, no, in the yeah, season, yeah, yeah. so we had the story done, but the the trailers and the pitch decks were done today. Yeah, yeah. I love them both Thank so you. much. Thank oh, you. Guys. Man, I know that was a tough decision. I, I really appreciate it because I know. <laughs> we, we, yeah. we, we, we talked it out. Yeah. Genuinely, it was, it was a battleground in here. <laughs> it sounded like, intense. Like yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, we were, we just, were talking yeah. like people who had $2 billion. <laughs> <laughs> ready to invest. Also, just so you know, on both of your sheets, the uh, how much money would this film make? I wrote, does it matter? <laughs> I was like, I was like, I, I, I have beliefs for both, but I'm sticking yeah. with my morals on this one. Yeah. Yeah, you're the best kind of exec. Yeah. 
it, uh, <laughs> you're who I hope for. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it sounded like that scene in Oppenheimer where they're like, who should we bomb? He's like, well, my <laughs> wife goes on vacation yeah, and we yeah, island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. I can't wait oh, to listen right. back to that. Yeah, so, yeah, like, it, was, hey, it was really yeah. funny, like yeah. hilariously intense for what yeah. it was about. Wait, <laughs> thank you. Thank you to all yes. our judges. Yes. Like we have all their info in the description. Shama, yes. Cruz, Gunner. Hey, so much for this has been a great season. Thank you guys so much for keeping up with us. We'll be back after the hiatus next year with season four. And hopefully we'll have the same panel coming back for next year's finale. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. It's yep. a tie, baby. Also, the only reason why the show will be back is because uh, Chase did not lose. Today. Yep. I would have yeah. quit. <laughs> yeah, I would have quit. He was 100%. Uh, <laughs> the feature of the show I was hanging in the balance. I, I, I feel the need and to it say was, it. Was say, it was pulled up from the cliff <laughs> by Gunner. Like, I, uh, like I, when I was coming up with my persona for this, I was like, going into it, I was like, I need to come up with something that would be the funniest for when I lose. <laughs> because there's, you never know when you're against one. Have you ever seen a SpongeBob trailer? No. I hey, not. I've heard of this is for everybody at home too. Uh, you go watch last year's Rival Pitch finale, you can see a SpongeBob trailer. Hey, we'll see you guys next season.